here, right? Hosting an open house today inside one of these beautiful homes. And I wanted to just give you guys a kind of a tour of what you could buy and pick up in Birmingham and under the million dollar price point range. So come along with me as we step on inside. We're right here, pretty much off of Lincoln, Ernest C. Home High School. You now beautiful circle driveway to come on up and outside is all brick, roof is newer, and then you have the attached garage over there, surrounded by, you know, really nice houses, really nice neighborhood, of course. The biggest drawback is right here. You're sharing a driveway, essentially, with the school. Friday night, where you wanna check out some high school football, but from day to day, it could be a little bit of a hassle uh, with all the traffic. On top of you already being on kind of a main road right here. Now, if you can get past that already, and this is a great opportunity and it'd be a great opportunity for people so when you have things like main roads or shared driveways those are all things that help you lower the price because everybody doesn't can vibe with those things but that is a good opportunity for people who can to get in a area for under market value so that's a little bit what's going on in this one let's check out the inside How I'm gonna run it is I'm gonna walk you through as if you were one of my clients and we're gonna talk about, you know, the various parts of the house along the way, give you a little bit more insight on the house and things I like and dislike and, you know, go from there. As soon as you walk in, you got the, you know, for your entrance here, which is actually pretty nice. And then like this nice little cove here, you know, put little things here, like I got some of my materials here because I'm actually hosting an open house today on this property. Check it out, so when you open in, open concept. That's the first thing I noticed, and it's very inviting and very warm. You know, neutral colors, something that I like as well, uh, but not overly done in the white. That's also always a good take. And then you got a focal point being the fireplace, but it's not overbearing in the house. Then you also have this huge window facing the front of the house, letting a ton of natural light which is always a nice touch because light coming in the house always makes it feel a little bit better. I don't like being in really dark houses. Like, it, it's no fun. All right, so then you got the formal living room set up over here, which is always a nice touch because for some reason, more and more houses don't have them. People like to have because after the pandemic, a lot of people want to eat with their families and gather a lot more because they got used to it during that. Now, this is a pretty cool, unique feature as well. Like these coals that go around kind of similar to how it is at the front door. You got it inviting you into the kitchen. This is the side door here. This is a closet and then that's your garage entrance. And so you can also have access to come in through this way. Nice little mini chandelier there as well. Fridge on this side, away from the main space. Kind of adds an extra touch because you're not necessarily, you know, seeing that take up a lot of space in the kitchen. Granite countertops. We got these taupe nude cabinets. It's something I like more so than the white now, just because I, I think our eyes are getting fatigued with all the white. It, off the kitchen, looks like you got a formal family room set up, which is always a nice touch though, so they can hang out, watch TV while we're making the meals and we don't have to be separated. We got the laundry. So full laundry room. I like to switch up with the uh, checkerboard plaid. And then your first half bath. This house has two half baths. Haven't been able to locate the second one. Of this main living space is this room over here. So we walk right past it. You probably didn't even notice it. These are doors. The little pocket doors, they close to give you a little privacy because this could be a primary suite if you wanted it to be. Ton of room, you come in here, you've got those doors closed. People won't even know you're really even in here. I know growing up, my dad was like that. Like we would have company and he wasn't trying to have it. So he'll just go upstairs and close the door and act like he wasn't there. But down here, I mean, you could be right in the action and still people wouldn't know you were there. Walk-in closet, of course, nice. And then full bath, showers over there vanity and you got it. all right so check it on out next spot let's hit we've arrived at the top floor it's a cool little you know skylights here this is like a flex space or loft space we call it they had it set up as a gym you can set up however you want tvs couches library whatever now over to the left off the flex space they have the fourth bedroom which is being used as a huge walk-in closet and i can't say that i blame them I mean, this is an awesome, awesome closet. You let me know what you think. Off this closet is 
a bathroom. Another full bathroom. There's three full bathrooms here. So you got the loo and then granite countertops and then the shower. And it drove on into another bedroom. Now, this is the other primary bedroom that I would say. And I think I would simply choose this one as mine just because I like having that access directly across and into that other room. And then this whole little seating area is pretty cool because you could be in your bedroom, but not be in your bed. And that's always a good thing for me just so I don't fall asleep and nap. Also the same way, like I usually don't have bedrooms. I just don't have TVs in bedrooms, but this is a way to kind of cheat and do it without necessarily being in the bed watching TV. And then you come into the final bedroom, which is directly across from the primary. And it has its own bathroom as well. Walk-in closet, nice. I think this was probably formerly used as a nursery. A uh, very good size for that. Like the little doggles on the wall. Then we're coming down here, bathroom, full, nice. And that's it for the upper level. And let's take our way on downstairs to the basement and show you the extra 1200 square feet of finished basement. And this one has a cool feature down here that definitely appeals to the drinkers out there, that's for sure. So coming down, you have the you know entertainment area, game area. You know, the uh, dartboard, foosball table. Um, I forgot exactly what this is called, shuffleboard. Yeah, I'm actually pretty decent at this game even though I don't know what it is. <laughs> Over here, you have the other half bath. So, finally found it down here in the basement. This is the mechanical closet, tucked away all your furnace and hot water tanks. I mean, this is a bar if I've ever seen one. You got overflow seating over there, the bar stool set up like it's the Cheers Lounge, a deep freezer, a commercial grade uh, refrigerator. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was like one of those little drink spigots or whatnot under there because that's just how well they got it done. So I'm gonna check it out to make sure they don't. But they do have a dishwasher, which is actually pretty cool. Now this is the part that appealed to me the most because it's kind of like a hideaway little secret gym. So you got this room, TV of course, couch, whatever. Then, boom, got this built in a super cool wine cellar. The wine bottles there. Then you got all these cork board, you know, boxes built in, making, creating the walls. How cool is that? So let's head back upstairs and wrap this one on up. So the main things I like about this one is just how much space you have, the four bedrooms, and then how well and upkept everything's done, and then an extra space down below. Of course, the biggest thing that we don't like in this one is that it's so close to that school and you don't have a ton of parking because often on the street, it's, it's kind of tough to get in there and to park. So you have to use our circle driveway, which is great, but it's not the best for a ton of entertaining unless you use the school parking lot. And then the backyard is a little small too, so but in Birmingham, that's kind of what you expect. Another big bonus for this one is that the price. So there's only 17 houses of the 69 houses in Birmingham total that are under a million dollars. This is one of them. So, you know, being able to be priced lower than a million dollars, you know, kind of bodes well for this one. And, you know, I think it's an opportunity because you're such a great location. All in all, you know, if you want to see more house tours just like this one, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button just so you can know exactly what to expect when you're shopping in uh, Metro Detroit. And I catch you the next one.